Hello and welcome to Tuesday's Collector's Lot. If you were watching yesterday, you'll know that my home all week is this recently built Georgian-style house not far from Sheffield. The owners worked with the building team, spending months carrying out research to make as authentic a period home as possible. Today I'll be meeting a member of the rock band Saxon, who has a passion for collectibles from this part of the world, and a little girl who's earned her stripes when it comes to collecting everything she can to do with bees. First, though, to a collection dedicated to the classic sci-fi series Blake 7, which was shown on TV in the 70s and 80s. Ken Snowden, always one to take his job very seriously, beamed himself down to meet collector Andy Hopkinson. Clearly into Blake Seven in a big way, Andy. How did it start? Oh well, it was in my early teens. Actually, that's when Blake Seven started. I think uh, in '78. It, um, it caught my imagination at the time. Really, it um, was something very different. Um, the, the designs were distinctive, which was one thing that caught my eye. It's basically like a, a Robin Hood in space, um, led by Blake. That'll be me, indeed. And uh, he took control of a fantastic spaceship called the Liberator, and they. Uh, waged war against the Federation. For those that saw the last episode, the Liberator actually blew up as well, so this can't be the original set. No, this was uh, a set that I built for a convention last year. And when you come to try to find genuine bits and pieces then, I mean, where do you get that from? Well, the, the BBC had quite a few auctions years ago, so they sold lots and lots of things off, including lots of costumes and props, and that's mainly where a lot of the things come from. Can you remember the first piece you collected? I think it was the Travis costume. That was at the first auction I went to. I, I had been to previous auctions before then, but not bought anything. I don't know what, I don't know why I bought that one, but uh, um, I haven't looked back. <laughs> so let's have a look at the paraphernalia. The uh, the small one at the side of it, that's an original one. Uh, it's from an episode called Gambit, where they had to militarise Orac to actually get it inside a casino. They wanted to break the bank and um, uh, win a lot of money. And what about the spaceship just in front there? Oh yes, well that's um, from only one episode actually. It's very well detailed for. Uh, just for one, for a one-off ship. And uh, apart from the bits and pieces from the series, there's quite a lot of kind of uh, uh, peripheral stuff. There, there must be quite a following for Blake Seven, isn't it? Yes, there is. Yes, it's quite a big uh, fan base. Yeah, lots of diff um, li in lots of different countries. And what about these uh, teleport braces that were used? They made quite a few of these because uh, I think everybody on the show, the guest artists and everyone, walked off the show with one. <laughs> <laughs> when they got to the end of the first season, they had about three left. Who would wear these uh, other costumes around the show? Well, this, this particular one is a, a mutoid, which is um, a bit similar to a Federation guard, only a female version of that, really. Um, that's another Avon one. Um, the white dress there, that one is by uh, the villain, Servalan, and that's a very nice example of that. And where did the artwork come from? Well, this is um, from a, um, several artists, actually. Some there for uh, a magazine cover, and uh, some of the other ones are for uh, The Logic of Empire, which was an audio production. And is there anything you're still after? Well, there are a few designs that um, uh, I particularly like. Uh, a particular designer on the show, quite a flamboyant, theatrical-style de designer. She designed some very flamboyant outfits. She has all her original um, pastel artwork, which is very nice. So I've got to ask you, I mean, it's a big collection. Where do you keep it? It doesn't fit in the average semi. No, that's true, yes. Um, several big garages, actually, <laughs> apart from Zen, who leans up again in several big garages. We've already established that at the end of the series, at the very end, everybody gets shot and uh, the whole thing blows up. Mm. Good job that doesn't happen in real life. <laughs>